All right, welcome to how to make an Android app. So what we're going to be using in this tutorial is an application called Android Studio, which is a free program to use. You can download it at developer.android.com. And it's a somewhat involved process to actually get the application up and running. But just know that you're going to need to download the Java JDK for your particular system at oracle.com. And regardless of whatever system you're using and how you want to do it, you are going to need some type of emulator. So you're going to have to create an emulator in the AVD manager you see up here. It's this little button. And you create, you're basically creating a virtual phone or tablet that you can use to test out the app that you're creating. And in my case, since I'm running on a laptop that uses an AMD processor, I also downloaded a program that's called Motion. And Jenny Motion is basically a way to emulate an Android phone so that you can test out your app. And uh, the reason I use Jenny Motion is because with AMD processors, it's way quicker to use the Jenny Motion app than to use the default emulator that comes with Android Studio. And another thing you're going to want to keep in mind is this SDK manager, which I'll talk about SDKs in a moment. But you're going to want to have the latest updates for your SDK downloaded and installed and so basically when you open up the SDK manager it'll tell you what you can download a lot of it is automated you just have to accept the agreements and hit OK but you want it to all be up to date in this SDK manager when you're actually running the app through Android Studio and testing it on your computer behind the scenes Android Studio is using many tools to produce the final APK which is the actual format of the app that you build and actually create a functioning app. So I'm just going to create a very simple app with you today. It's going to be essentially uh, an app with a button and when you press that button the text on the button changes. So it's very simple but I just wanted to show you how that whole process works in the core components of Android Studio in a very quick way. So when you first open Android Studio you're going to be presented with this screen and for our purposes what we're gonna do is start a new Android Studio project so I'm gonna click on that and we're gonna give our project a name I'm gonna call it Austin's cool app and I go ahead and click next and this is where you choose some of the important options of your application you can see right here uh, you have the option to make an app for different pieces of hardware. Um, we're going to stick with the phone and tablet, but there's some other interesting options. And you can see right under the phone and tablet where it says minimum SDK. And there's a drop down menu here that allows you to choose from a number of APIs. Alright, so to explain what this is, uh, an API stands for Application Programming Interface and it's basically in a sense a collection of ready-made stuff that you can use and the SDK which stands for software development kit is usually a collection of tools plus the API so as far as the options you can see that there's a number of API's to choose from and if you notice they all have cute little names that are in alphabetical order so for this tutorial I'm going to use KitKat and when I click on KitKat, it's going to say right here that the app will run on approximately 73.9% of the devices that are active on the Google Play Store. So about three quarters of the devices out there will be able to run this app on the existing software on their Android devices. So I'm going to stick with KitKat and go ahead and click Next. And we're going to have the option to add an activity. An activity is an application component that provides a screen with which the users can interact in order to do something, such as dial the phone, take a photo, send an email, or even view a map. Each activity is given a window in which to draw its user interface. And the window typically fills the screen, but it may be smaller than the screen and float on top of other windows. So we're just going to create a very simple activity and we'll we'll leave it on the default empty activity and go ahead and click next and we'll leave the default activity name and just go ahead and hit finish and what's going to happen now is the project is going to be built so that we can work once the project loads up you're going to see a message that says gradle build finished and basically gradle 
it's essentially a Java virtual machine, and it's an essential part of Android Studio. So it has to build your project first, and it might take a minute. But this is it. This is the program. So this is where you're going to be building your app. So I'm just going to talk about a little bit about some of the main parts of the program. So you're going to see two main tabs at the uh, center of your program. In essence, this tab is for the layout of your app, and this tab is for the main code of your app. There is mainactivity.java, which is essentially the main activity code and the actual application file, which ultimately gets converted to an executable file that runs your application. It's your source code. And, of course, the activity main.xml, which is the layout file that is referenced by your application when building its interface. This file will get changed very frequently to change the layout of the application. And you'll notice with this tab that at the bottom it has design and text. And when you click on design, you can see it shows you a, a little picture of a phone. Now in this particular case, I switched the preview version to 19 to match the API that I selected in the beginning, the KitKat API. And that's only because it was having rendering issues. So if you get some sort of rendering error when you click on design, go ahead and try switching the preview option. And you can see right here it says hello world. So we know we're, we're up and running. What we're going to do first in this tutorial is just change that hello world text. Now I could click on it and go down in this properties panel on the bottom right and change the text. You can do that nice and easy. But I just want to show you how the design and the text tabs at the bottom here are connected. So if I just select on text, I can basically see the text version of the layout. So I'm going to go down to where it says text view and you can see right here Android colon text equals quote hello world quote. And I'll change that to what's up YouTube and I'm going to go ahead and go back to the design and you can see that it changes the text there. Very simple. So also what's really cool about this layout tab is that you can just drag and drop parts of your app into the screen here. So for example if I wanted to have a button in here which is what we're going to be doing in this tutorial I can drag over button and just drop it right in the center. You can see it says new button and um, I'll change the text a different way this time. I'll use the properties button and I'll just click on the text and just type cool button. And you can see it says cool button. And if I want to switch the size of the button, uh, one way to do it is I can go up to this layout width and layout height row in the properties panel and I'm just going to switch the width to um, fill parent instead of wrap content and you can see it it stretches out to the width of the screen now I want to run this app just to test everything out so what I'm gonna do is get the Jenny motion program running that I talked about earlier and go ahead and start up the custom emulator that I've already had set up and once that starts up I'm basically going to do a test run and send our app to this Jenny Motion emulator. So I'm just going to minimize that. I can close the device manager. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and hit the play button up top here. It's actually the run button. And what I'm going to do is um, it's, it already sees the Jenny Motion emulator. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And what's going to happen is that the Gradle build is going to run and the app is going to be sent to this emulator here. All right, and once the Gradle build finishes, the app shows up on our little Jenny Motion emulator. You can see the cool app. You can see the cool button. And I'm going to show you how you can change the background and how we can give this button some code to basically give it some instructions for what to do when it's pressed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this open. I'm just going to minimize it. And first thing I'm going to do is show you how to change the background of the app. So you can see right now it's just a, a white background. So what I'm going to do is write some code in the text part of this activity main tab. And I'm going to go 
right under tools I'm gonna go ahead and create a new line of text and I'm going to type Android oh, can't spell Android colon background equals quote and this is where I'm going to choose the color of the background so we have to put it in hex color code form so I want to pick a bright green and for that I'm gonna just type pound six six ff three three and when I go back to design it should have a green background now it takes a second but you can see I have the green background and if I hit the run button up top here I could see that but I want to change a little bit more before we actually run the app and so like I said what I want to do is give this button some code so basically when we click on our button I want the text on that button to change so what I'm going to do is go to the main activity.java and like I said this is the source code of your program this is where we give instructions to the different parts of the layout in the activity main.xml tab and what I want to do is go down to this bracket here that's under the protected void and push enter because I want to start a new a new bracket essentially um, after the protected void and what I'm going to type is public void button capital O N click button on click and make sure you're using the proper capitalizations when you're typing this parentheses view space lowercase v close parentheses space open bracket and basically this is saying do something when the button is clicked and what that something is is going to be in this bracket and actually before we get to that what we're going to do is see how it says uh, Android view dot view question mark and alt plus enter what you want to do is actually push the alt plus enter and it's going to add this line of code up top here the import Android dot view dot view which is going to be needed for this piece of code because we added the view here and so we have a method but it needs to be associated with the button itself so I'm gonna go back to the activity main tab and in the properties panel on the right side I'm gonna go down and I'm looking for the on click option here and what I'm gonna do is click in the blank space and the drop down menu what I want is button on click so I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna go back to the main activity dot Java and I'm gonna hit enter and in between these two brackets here I'm going to type capital B button and lowercase button equals parentheses button close parentheses space lowercase v semicolon okay and just like before I'm gonna go ahead and hold alt and push enter and it's going to add the import Android dot widget dot button semicolon at the top. And in this case, our variable is the letter V. So I'm going to hit enter again and type our final line of code for this tutorial and do parentheses, parentheses, button. And then in between the two closing parentheses, I'm going to put a lowercase v for our variable and go dot set text parentheses clicked and this clicked part is going to be what the text on the button changes into um, so it says cool button right off the bat if you remember and when the button is pressed on our emulator or ultimately when we send it to our actual phone um, when you push that button it's gonna say clicked and before we send it to the emulator what I'm gonna do is just add a semicolon after the um, clicked parentheses um, otherwise we're gonna get an error code so with that said um, make sure that this stop button is gray we don't want the app running already we wanna start it fresh so I'm gonna click 
stopped and then click the run button and just go ahead and hit OK on the Jenny Motion controller if that's what you're using and we're gonna let it build and once the Gradle build is finished we're gonna test it out so you can see the background is green now looks very beautiful and when I click on cool button it should say clicked so I'm gonna go ahead and test it out and look at that our line of code worked so it's a very simple app and I just wanted to show you a very simple way of using the program to get you started and you know introduce you to the world of Android Studio if we wanted to actually publish this app on the Google Play Store um, what you'd first have to do is register for a Google Play publisher account and when you register for this publisher account you're gonna visit the Google Play developer console and you're gonna enter information about your developer identity which is your name email address and so on and the cool thing about Android is that it's relatively cheap to put an app on the Google Play Store. You have to pay a $25 registration fee. And so it's 25 bucks to get your app on the store for people to download. So I, I think that's pretty sweet. And I really hope that this inspires some of you to go out and start making Android apps. Uh, I really appreciate you watching and good luck for the future and have a good one.